Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics and this is the Political Post Box where we take a look at some comments that have found its way onto the channel, most engaged ones with from the past week and I add my own thoughts onto them. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news in politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So into the first one, as you can see, a great fan of me. Says, where's your approval, Phil Nokia? Oh, how witty. All of the people who join together in giving thanks to many thousands of NHS, I think you'll find it's much more than thousands, notice all your ungrateful loony left sheep scribers haven't done so either. I think that's supposed to say, spelling's hard, I know. Uh, nasty, horrible lot, I must say. Actually, I would say that taking part in this travesty of a scheme is the uh, horrible part of it. So for those who don't know what this was is last week there was a big applause in the country and you know much clapping to be had in the streets for the NHS to show our you know gratitude for what they're doing. I don't know why. How is this helping? Do we do the Brexiteers think that you can beat the virus by clapping? Can we beat in the virus? No we're not. Is it showing the NHS, oh, you're valued in the NHS, oh, this is fantastic, oh, a nice round of applause. That's much better than the PPE we need. That's much better than the medical equipment we need to be able to treat the sick. That's much better than the hospitals that we would like to have opened. That's much better than the 100,000 nurses, doctors and other medics that the NHS is currently short of. No. I'll tell you how I showed my appreciation for the NHS. I've spent my adult life voting for parliamentary candidates who are committed to ensuring the NHS get the supplies it needs, get the funding it needs. I have not voted ever for a Conservative candidate. The other thing I've done more recently is I have signed up to volunteer to help out the NHS where I can. Um, a lot of the people, many hundreds of thousands of people have done this, a lot more useful than clapping. Uh, will be people you would expect who've been furloughed from work, they're at home on 80% pay or whatever, but they've got time on their hands and they want to help out. I don't have time on my hands. Uh, in fact, I'm actually working more hours as a result of this at the moment, uh, bizarrely, but I've still volunteered. So what time I do have, uh, I will help out where I can as well. That is what the NHS need. Other things that have been going on, there's actually crowdfunding going on. If the government will not give the NHS the money it needs to be able to buy equipment, then, because uh, that's the issue, it's not that there aren't places to buy the equipment from, to, to order it from. It's that the government are not giving them the money to do it. So don't give me all that rubbish about the government have, have, are giving the NHS extra funds to do that. No, they're not. No, they are not. Um, they're not letting them buy ventilators. They're not letting them buy the PPE they need. So people are, are crowdfunding that to help out. That's raising quite a lot of money. Nowhere near enough, but it is, it's people giving what they can. So that's the sort of practical help that I am giving the NHS. Applauding them from within my house, where even if my neighbours work for the NHS, which by the way, they don't. If they did, that's not gonna help either. They're not even gonna hear it. No, that's of no use. And if it galls me that people would say, would think that they're helping the NHS by having a round of applause. And it was absolutely sickening to see Tory ministers who are responsible for the fact that not only has the NHS been starved of funds for 10 years, but continues to be, even when we know this is a serious crisis, even when we know that had it been funded properly over the last 10 years, it would still need more funding now to deal with this once in a century emergency that those Tory ministers who are refusing to even bring it up to the level. The only financial measure they have given the NHS, as far as I can tell right now, because they're not giving them money for the equipment they need, the only measure I can see is that they have finally allowed NHS staff to park in hospital car parks and not be charged for it. Bear in mind that before this crisis kicked off, Boris Johnson had said that no one visiting a UK hospital will be charged car parking fees. No one, not visitors, not anyone. That was a massive lie uh, exposed by the fact that they have now said that NHS staff won't be charged. Even though they said that no one was being charged, which was absolute rubbish. So there you go. That's my thoughts on that one. You know, don't applause. I mean, I would say, 
apologise for voting Conservative if you're concerned at all about the, the dire straits the NHS is in. But at the very least, you could resolve to not vote for them next time. Of more immediate practical help, donate to the fund to get the NHS some equipment that the government are not providing. Write to your MP to demand that they insist that the government pay the NHS the money it needs and gets them the, the equipment it needs. And also volunteer for the NHS if you're able to. Not It's not suitable for everyone. Obviously, if you live with someone who'd be particularly vulnerable, absolutely don't do that. If you haven't got the time to do it because you're a key worker, then of course you won't be able to do that either. And of course, if you are a vulnerable person, absolutely don't do that. But, you know, if you can help out, do that. It's not helped anyone. Anyway, next one. Uh, saying here, we live in France and if we need to go out, we fill in a form which has tick boxes for the acceptable reasons. Shopping, doctors, etc. If it is for a walk, then one hour max and a specified radius of our house. The time you leave the house has to be marked on the form in every case. The gendarmes will stop you and the fine will be levied if you are in violation of the rules. I think that the UK government should stop faffing about and sort their mess out. Look after yourselves. Now, I would agree and disagree on some aspects of this. So the government have now put measures in place. Now, if people in the UK are fully seized of these measures, the measures should largely be enough. The main problem we have at the moment is some people go into work that really shouldn't be. And it's not necessarily the workers' fault. This is, it may be the government's fault if you're talking about, although they've now guaranteed, or they say they've guaranteed wages for various people, there's a lot of people it doesn't cover. If you've just got a job, for example, at a place, well, that's now gone. People are losing those jobs if they were only just employed. It's quite easy to get rid of those people. Uh, zero hours contracts, bit of a, a tricky one there. Um, even the self-employed, even though they've announced measures for the self-employed, well, you're not getting anything for some time. And also, if you haven't been self-employed for some time, you're still getting nothing. So if you've just become self-employed, you have no, you've get nothing. So if you're on no income, well, you are. You're getting universal credit if you can apply for it. Because at the moment, there's so many people having to apply for that. Uh, with, you know, that famous 94, I think it's between 92 and 94 pound a week. People seem to disagree on it. I've not checked myself. Not very much, uh, basically. And uh, certainly not enough. And it's been said that there's now an awful lot of middle class people who have been used to always being in work, who who used to pour scorn on those who had to claim for benefits or scroungers, now having not only to do the same, but finding out how bad the system is. Because it's particularly bad at the moment because there's so many people applying. There's not the staff to deal with it. I, I gather the government have, have reallocated an extra 10,000 civil servants to help out with this task. That just gives you some idea of the scale of the amount of unemployment effectively that is resulting from this. But yeah, so there's, there's an awful lot of people. You'd think to yourself, well, they've now got this guarantee in place for workers and they've got it in place for the self-employed. That covers everyone, doesn't it? No, because there's huge pockets of people in both of those categories that are not covered by it. Uh, the employees isn't covered if you don't have the um, if you don't have the sort of employer helping you out because if they just sack if they just or make you redundant in reality is what they're doing, then there's nothing you can do about that. This scheme doesn't help you in that situation. And if you're self-employed, as I say, if you don't have a tax return from last year because you've only just become self-employed. <laughs> you've got nothing because that's what it's going to be based on so you've got nothing um but yeah so you know in, in terms of the fact that a lot of people are going out to work that that shouldn't be part of that is the government's fault part of it not necessarily part of its employers forcing them to go when maybe they actually shouldn't i don't know uh in certain cases there in terms of this tick box with the acceptable reasons i think the issue there is it may be needed. I'm not going to say absolutely not needed. It may be needed. It is. I'm not going to blame the government for trying something where they sort of say the reasons you can go out and leave it at that very, very quickly, as long as they keep an eye on it. And if, and if it's not working, then they need to tighten the restrictions. And it may include something like this, and we'll just have to accept it. The issue is that there's all sorts of little situations that people may have personal little circumstances that mean they may have to do something that at first glance looks like it's not within the rules. But 
it will actually reduce the spread of infection, you know, rather than increase it. What we don't want, obviously, is a situation where a person leaves their home and goes to visit another home with a household of other people in it. So the idea, of course, is like person A goes to visit person B. And, and let's say one of them gives the virus to the other because one of those households is infected unknown to them. They don't know, but they are and they pass it on to each other. What then happens is that infection then passes to a whole other household. Now, that's what we're trying to avoid because then what happens is when the infection is passed to that household, someone else in that household goes and visits per household C, passes it there, someone else, and, and the whole web appears and it's all very messy. Also why when you're out and about, the distancing. So if you're coming across someone in the pavement, coming the opposite way, get out of the way. You know, I mean, the roads are pretty empty at the moment. To be honest, I have a little glance round to get into the bloody road. There's unlikely to be a car coming. You, you, you can still do the distancing past there. I'm not even going to laugh at the people. People have been showing me photos of like particularly elderly people going out and not just mass and gold, but there's some sort of like plastic bag over the head and somehow they're not suffocating themselves. Well, I'm not going to laugh at that, actually, because, I mean, presumably there must be a vent because if you've got a full plastic see-through, of course, covering over your head. There must be a vent somewhere so you can breathe. Wherever that vent is, it is also the equivalent of your face. But I get that. If someone's got a cough when you're when they're walking past you or something like that, head high. If you can cover your whole face, you may look silly. I'm not going to laugh at it. That's not. It's not a silly thing to do, really. So, you know, if people are taking appropriate measures, and I'm not suggesting the plastic bag because it sounds a bit dodgy to me. But I haven't heard of cases of suffocation, so I assume they're taking precautions. Um, it's not a good it's not a good lesson for children, is it? <laughs> but still. But if people are taking those sensible precautions and it works, then we're okay. I suspect there's enough people not following it and not really being considerate, and we will have to tighten them at this point. Um, but yeah, the, the UK government have certainly been very late to this. Whether they are keeping a sufficient eye on it, I don't know, because there's two aspects to this. The government, on the one hand, could be looking at it and going, well, the tighter we grip the nation, the more they're likely to rebel. So let's just do what's necessary and keep an eye on it. In which case, fine, as long as they are keeping an eye on it and not just waiting for the three weeks to end before saying they need to restrict it further, if that's what's needed. But then there is also an element where I'm thinking, well, this is a conservative government. It's very much about doing whatever you damn well please. That's what conservative governments are about, not having the government tell you how to live your life. So they don't like these restrictions at all. And I think there's an element with these people, you know, like Boris Johnson, people from this sort of background, that if they are advised tight restrictions are needed, they may resist not say no at this point i think it's too serious but they may resist and it may mean further delays so yeah um i mean i do look at countries like france and italy and spain and think you know uh, and, and sort of think they've got tighter restrictions in place um we are probably going to have to follow them at some point and i know there'll be a lot of people say well you should do it early rather later and yeah i'm not going to argue with that um, but we will just have to see how it goes now. But ultimately, it is one of these scenarios where if the people of Britain actually took it seriously, um, it would go a whole lot better. It would go a whole lot better. But the but people don't do that, so the government do need to take action, I think. Next one. So, little little quote here. I forget whoever who said this, actually, but the quote is, the analogous quote here, says, if climate change science is wrong, we'd all end up with a cleaner, safer world. If climate change deniers are wrong, we're all dead. Same thing here. I would say it's a very similar thing here. Um, obviously, this quote is all about climate change. It's a bit like, well, so you've got some people saying, you know, climate change is an issue. We need to do this. Otherwise, our environment is not going to be suitable for living in before long. And those who go, no, you know, you're making a fuss about nothing. Now, if we listen to the first group, as you, as you say there, what, what's the worst that can happen? You end up with a cleaner, safer world, as the quote goes. If you listen to the second group and they're wrong, 
What happens is it's too late to do anything about it. You're knackered. So what's better to do? It's better to better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it, I suppose, is the other quote here. Now, in the case of the corona issue, it's not exactly the same. It is very, very similar. The way in which it is similar, social distancing when out and about and not going out and about when you can't help. So various measures that you could do at any time and it'd be fine. So social distancing, just, you know, move away from each other uh, in the street and things like that. Not using public transport unless you absolutely have to. If you have the option of driving to work or the grocery store, I would even argue that as long as there's enough parking, let's say you live 10 minutes away from the supermarket. Now you may wish to combine that with your exercise and that's fine. I've seen people do that. I would argue that if the route to that supermarket means there may be people walking either way and it's not easy to maintain that two meter distance, actually it is probably better to drive. Greta Thunberg will not thank me for saying that, I'm sure, I'm apologies for that, but I'm gonna suggest that at the moment it is probably better to drive um, and get your groceries and, and come back. It reduces the amount of contact potentially with other people. So there are various things that we can do and they're not going out when you don't absolutely need to go out as well. There are things we can do that um, that wouldn't that at any time would be fine. However, an awful lot of the measures we're having to put in place and, in, and some that we haven't put in place yet, but we're going to need to have such a massively detrimental effect on the economy that it's not the sort of thing to do in good times, you know, so it's so it is similar like with the climate change thing if climate change size were completely wrong which of course it is not but if it were then what we're talking about uh, to, to put the situation right even if there's nothing to actually put right does us no harm at all and for people going oh but it does harm the economy because we're having to use these other measures no you just create a new economy you 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 create a new economy instead of focusing on burning fossil fuels and digging things up out of the ground you focus on industries that are into recycling or, I mean, people are even developing things to extract carbon dioxide from the air, turn it back into fuels and use that again. You know, so recycling greener technologies uh, would be the way forward and you would, and people would be employed in those industries. So you'd boost the economy that way. Um, but yeah, in the Corona situation, there are measures that, are not good, they're harmful. But it's a bit like taking a medicine. The medicine is particularly, you know, it's potentially harmful. Anything, particularly if it needs, you know, prescribing, but even some things that don't are harmful. Um, but, you know, we take them or a doctor says take these because it's judged that the risk of not taking a treatment is greater than of taking it. And that's the, you know, the same thing here. It's, uh, it is harmful doing what we're doing to the economy, to society in general, it could be argued, because we've only gone through one week of these measures so far, and what's it gonna be like later on? It has to be well managed. In other countries, it seems to be going reasonably well, but th that's because they have governments who have been honest with people and informing them properly. This has come rather late in this country. We'll have to see how people respond. The Prime Minister is writing a letter, I gather, to all households, so that should be arriving, I suppose, this week. Uh, setting things out, that sounds like a good move. Hopefully what's in the letter, I, I think you can get a preview, I haven't actually read it yet. Um, we'll start to really get that conversation going. But yeah, it's it's a similar thing. Um, and, and, and on a personal level, there are definitely things we could go, even if you really don't believe this is a serious issue. And, and to be honest with you, why on earth would healthcare systems around the world be taking such measures if it was not something to be worried about? But if you're just convinced of that, what harm does it do you when you come across someone else in the street just to stay two meters away from them? What harm does it do you not to get onto a packed bus if you have a car or a bike available to be able to not do that? What harm does it do you just to, to stay in a bit more? None really. So you can at least do that. And at the end of the day, if it turns out that, you know, there wasn't anything to worry about, which we know is not true, then what harm has it done? But what harm does it do if you think that these measures are excessive and you don't follow them and as a result, you kill your granny?
Anyway, after that cheery one, on to the next one. Um, so this was actually on Patreon rather than YouTube, uh, someone here, but it's, uh, it's worth noting, it alludes to what we talked about in the first one about the volunteering for the NHS. So it says, I volunteered to help the NHS via two separate channels, but I have yet to hear anything from anyone. So just how many of the 405,000 volunteers, there's quite a lot more than that now, I think, um, have actually been given assignments? Does anyone know? I mean, I per I, I've seen a few people alluding to the fact that they're going to be starting. What I would say, there are hundreds of thousands of people that have signed up to volunteer to help out, which is marvellous. And, and this is the thing, again, about this country. A lot of countries like this, I'm not suggesting this is uniquely us. You know, when the chips are down, we do actually help out. It, it's quite remarkable, and I know it sounds we it seems weird from outside. I mean, look, why do you keep voting for Conservative governments when people are actually quite nice in this country? I don't know. Well, I do, I do sort of know. It's complicated. Um, but, we, we, you know, we are like this. And, and also, people do value the NHS. Um, they just fall for lies, ultimately. But you've got hundreds of thousands of people within the space of a week or so signing up to volunteer and it has to be pointed out people have pointed out it is true it's not just the government that's been asking for volunteers on a more local level volunteers have been asked for as well and people have signed up for that to process these applications to help out because some of the help being offered is going to require some checks i mean i for example was asked oh it's over there i was asked for example well you were asked in general some of them would require a dbs check like a criminal record check which i have a recent one of you know, as a teacher, um, and it asked for like an image of it, not the number from it, which is strange. I thought they would have asked for the registration number. But anyway, um, I tried to take a dodgy photo on my phone anyway. But uh, there will be checks required is what I'm saying. And that's going to keep people. And, and you think about how many people can they possibly have doing all these checks? They can't have enough to process hundreds of thousands anytime soon. They will be processing them. And as they're processed, those people, you know, will be able to get download the app and give their availability and, and start to help out. And that is happening. That is happening at the moment. I don't know numbers. I do know that there are people anecdotally starting. But, yeah, that's going to be the issue. I talked to you earlier about just to process the sheer number of universal credit, you know, um, applications they're having to reallocate 10,000 civil servants. And remember, we've already got a reduced, I mean, a reduced everything since the Conservatives took over 10 years ago. We've got a reduced police force. We've got a reduced NHS. We've got a reduced civil service. So, you know, the idea, and they were already stretched with Brexit. The idea of just chucking 10,000 civil servants from jobs that still need doing to this, uh, to, to universal credit, sorry. I mean, where, where is it to do this as well? So I don't even know how many people are working on it to, to process them all. It could be weeks before the, the some people are getting processed. Um, so, but if anyone has any more specific knowledge that's watching, then please throw that down in the comments below. Uh, right then, next one. So this is to do with uh, Boris Johnson not handing over, or uh, I don't think he even has, the legal text to get on with the Brexit talks, which could carry on. There's nothing to stop them carrying on, albeit under trying circumstances. But he hasn't. And that's why I was talking in that video about the fact, well, the EU have said, well, that's it now. The, EU, the Brexit talks are in deep freeze because, do you know what? You haven't given us anything to talk about. Someone here saying, um, these are the reasons he's hiding. He has no coronavirus. Boris Johnson is a chancer. He thought that if Trump can run America, then he must be able to run the UK. Now, a couple of things there. I'm quite sure he actually is infected. Um, there's, there's no reason why he would need to do otherwise. He'd find it quite easy to hide now anyway, because, again, the rules are that you don't venture out of your house unless you have to anyway. So he can easily hide away with impunity because actually it's a sensible thing to do in the name of social distancing. The other thing is, think it, if Trump can run America. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure he is. America has a number of advantages over the UK. And I think the UK has some advantage over the America in this regard. Some of the advantages are, first of all, Donald Trump is, as the president is extremely powerful, of course. But 
He is not as powerful in the, U in the US as, say, a British prime minister with a majority is in the UK. Boris Johnson has more power in the UK. He's not more powerful, but he has more power in the UK than Donald Trump has in America. Partly, this is to do with the fact that America is effectively a confederacy still. And individual states have the ability to sort of do their own thing to a large extent. And we have a similar situation in some parts of the UK because we have devolution in, to varying degrees in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Um, we're knackered in England. We've got no one that uh, acts as a counter or a foil to the chimpanzees in Downing Street. However, um, yeah, so I, I would take issue with that. But yeah, I absolutely think that, that Boris Johnson, he, he is infected. He is a chancer. Um, he, it would be interesting to know what he would have done had this crisis or had these crises not suddenly emerged. And in fact, because you know, it's worth bearing in mind that the start of the, the whole year has been a disaster so far. You know, we had the floods. We've forgotten about the floods now. There's people in the UK still not in their homes. They're still in temporary. They can't now. This pandemic has knackered that. They're not getting back. By the time they get back into their homes, they'll have more floods flooding them out again. They'll get straight back in a day later. There'll be more floods. The wind's picking up again. We're getting quite a wind. Bins have been blown around. I'm thinking to myself, God, are we getting another storm coming? That's all we need now. More storms in amongst all this lot. Um, do you know what? We could really not do with yet another natural calamity happening right now. Because it is. This is. I mean, we are... We've had the floods. We're now in the midst of a biblical plague. The reason why this will not wipe out as many people as more historical plagues haven't is simply because of modern medicine and modern techniques. That's the only thing that stops this wiping out a fifth of the population of the whole world um, or the continent. It wouldn't have actually affected the whole world, would it? Because if we didn't have modern transport, it wouldn't have got around the world as quickly. But it could have swept through a continent, couldn't it? But... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it actually reminds me, just quickly, just a little aside, little joke someone shared on Twitter about, you know, the, the Donald Trump supporters saying, oh, um, Donald Trump was given to us by God. Someone else saying, why had he run out of locusts? Um, but yeah, we've been beset by plagues of quite bibl literally biblical proportions at the moment. We really don't need another on top of everything else. As I say, there's already people, and, and my heart goes out to them, that can't go back to their homes and now are not going to be able to anytime soon because of these measures. Um, we don't really need more people displaced by this because that would, that would be hit. Because dealing with some, there are some natural emergencies that could happen that would mean the social distance is out, is out the window in particular communities, and that would be catastrophic. Uh, anyway, on to the last one. So Tim Martin, the boss of Weatherspoons, talked about this last week, him shafting his own employees, saying, oh, well, the government's not giving me the money just yet, so you're, you're stuck, you're not, you're, getting, you're not getting any money. Um, go and work for Tesco, as he said. So someone said, it wasn't the whole point of Brexit for Tim Martin to be able to treat his staff like crap for, uh, with impunity. Yes, essentially. Uh, the, the small number of business leaders that were in favour of it, it was absolutely so that they could um, behave exactly as he thought he could behave this time. End of the day, his workers were no longer bringing him sackfuls of money, so he just chops them, gets rid of them. Except he can't now, because I was asking in the video, I did sort of say, you know, is some of this legal? Turns out it's not. <laughs> some of what he's doing, absolutely not. So he's had to backtrack under pressure, um, legal and political pressure, so he is now having to pay his workers at least the 80%. So um, there we go. Uh, but that also just shows you the importance of pressure. And it, it, it does show you the importance of pressure. Um, various people have been saying like, oh, you know, we shouldn't be politicising the situation at the moment. It's political because the government have made it political. I made that point in a video last week or the week before. Uh, but also, we need to anyway. Remember... The government's, remember the government's, the UK government's initial strategy for this. And look where we are now. They've, they've moved along. The only reason they've moved along is because of criticism. 
because of public backlashes. The only reason workers are getting those wages guaranteed is because there was a public backlash at the thought of millions of people suddenly being unemployed. The only reason the self-employed have got anything at all, and it's not gonna help all self-employed people, is because there was a huge backlash. The only reason we're even increasing very slightly the amount of testing is because of the public backlash. The only reason the government has actually waived car parking fees for nurses and doctors and other NHS staff is because of criticism. The only way to get this government to do anything right is to criticise it when it does wrong. You do that in an emergency just like you do it at any other time. Quite frankly, when there's a Conservative government in power, it's always an emergency. Some emergencies are far worse than others. So that, you know, that's the reason I would say for that. And, and, and the same applies to employers like Tim Martin. You need, you need to make a public show of it. You need to put pressure on the government, put pressure on them to backtrack from these absolutely terrible stances because that's what he wanted to do. He wanted, that's why he wanted Brexit, because he wanted to completely deregulate it. He wanted to be able to hire and fire as he wished with no responsibility. And the problem is that in a, in a society, if you are wealthy, if you are, it's a pyramid scheme, you are benefiting from society. Tim Martin, in, in, with the law of the jungle, would be dead by now. He would be useless. He can't do anything without a minion of slaves. So for that, he's, because of society, he has become very wealthy. He therefore should accept the responsibilities of being in a society. In a society cohesive society needs to have a population that can do an honest day's work for an honest day's pay and he has to be part of that so there we are those are my thoughts add your own thoughts to the comments below i hope you found the video interesting if you did don't forget to click the like button and if you'd like to support the channel further then please click the patreon link for details and until next time i'll see you later